I've put a lot of hard work into understanding the science involved in DUI cases, and this has resulted in me becoming a highly sought after lecturer for advanced DUI seminars. No other DUI attorney in Pennsylvania has a speaking resume that I do. Last month was particularly busy for me as I conducted seven lectures and training sessions in three separate national seminars given in different states. In March of 2011, as I mentioned, I gave those seven seminars. The first one I'd like to talk to you about was at the American Chemical Society Spring 2011 National Meeting and Exposition in Anaheim, California. It was March 27th through 31st, 2011. The title of the talk that I gave was False Convictions and Bad Pharmacology, The Danger of the Drug Recognition Expert Protocol in Driving Under the Influence of Drug Prosecutions, a Call for Meaningful Validation. The abstract goes something like this. The Drug Recognition Expert, or DRE, program is a 12-step National Highway Traffic Safety Administration standardized national curriculum that has been designed to supposedly detect drug-impaired driving after arrest and before there is a toxicology result. This protocol has not been vigorously tested scientifically or validated, and the principles of the DRE are the standardized field sobriety tests, which themselves were never designed to record or quantify impairment, even in the case of ETOH testing. Yet, they're being wrongly used to do exactly that in the DRE context. The second talk I gave, also at the American Chemical Society, was false accusation, the issues of residual mouth alcohol, and the non-specificity and non-selectivity of roadside portable breath testing devices that use electrochemical-based detectors. The abstract of that was this. The limitations of commonly used portable breath tests play directly into the contextual bias that exists in DUI enforcement and lead to a large amount of false DUI arrests. There are many design flaws that cause PBTs to report erroneously high BAC re readings, and that is why it's important that we understand these devices thoroughly so innocent people are not arrested for DUI. Another seminar that I was invited to speak to is the Ohio Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers 2011 Ohio Advanced DUI Seminar in Columbus, Ohio, March 10th and 11th, 2011. <clears throat> the title of that talk was How Does Ohio Department of Health, Science and Police Science Stack Up to Real Science? It was a comparison between real empirical based science as opposed to police science. The, the purpose of this lecture was to help attorneys who are not technically trained learn how to cross examine technical experts in their field without having to become a master of the particular forensic science that's being offered. The fourth talk that I gave was also at that meeting. It was titled Advanced Gas Chromatography. This hour-long talk was designed to introduce the attendees to the powerful technique used in forensic blood testing for both ETOH and drugs called gas chromatography. An overview of the technique was offered. The third lecture I gave at that particular uh, seminar, uh, and my fifth lecture overall, was titled Blood and Urine Testing Basics. This hour-long talk was designed to introduce DOI attorneys to areas where there can be issues in terms of pre-analytical error that can cause an invalid or non-validated BAC result. It also showed how forensically unreliable urine testing is for drugs and also for ETOH determination. The sixth talk was again at that same seminar entitled Gas Chromatography, Mass Spectrometry, Integration, and Metrology. This was a bonus session. This was a five-hour small group workshop where all matters of gas chromatography were explained, including flame ionization detector use, mass spectrometry. Also, report resulting errors such as integration and metrology were introduced to the attendees. Another seminar that I was asked to present at, and I was honored to, was the Texas Criminal Defense Lawyers Association Masters of Cross-Examination Seminar in Houston, Texas. That was on March 3rd and 4th, 2011. The title of that talk that I gave was how to cross-examine an expert, even if you don't know what you're talking about. The purpose of that lecture was to help attorneys who had not been technically trained learn how to cross-examine technical experts in their field without having to become a master in their particular science that is being offered in the courtroom.